Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hank. This is episode 131. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hank. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Very special guest in the building. Let me start it off correctly. Salaikum. Now introduce yourself to the audience. Yes. Hi, everybody. So my name is Brittany. Um, I am the founder of Empowerment Fitness and Wellness Center, which empowers women all over the world. Copy that. Now, this is another one of them spotlight episodes where I saw that she made a post about, yo, we got this treat going on for the ladies. I instantly DM'd her and said this is an episode. I instantly commented under the picture, check your DMs, because this is an episode. And this is where we at. This is another spotlight situation. We've become the spotlight spot right now for the last couple of weeks. But, you know, people got things going on that I want to highlight. Because if you're doing something positive in the city, even if you ain't doing something positive in the city, you in Atlanta and you got something going on. You in Houston and you got something going on. I like that situation. We will spotlight you here on the Hot Hustle Podcast behind. So like we do on the spotlights, we reverse the show. We start off with what you need to know. The segment of what you need to know is sponsored by H2H Cleaning. That is my cleaning company. We do roofing, plumbing, flooring, HVAC, cleanups, cleanouts. Uh, remodeling, you name it, we're making it happen over there at H2H Cleaning. You get at me and we can make any of those situations happen for you. Now, Spotlight, you tell us what it is that we need to know. What do we need to know about whatever, whatever it is that you want to tell us about? So, yes. So, um, I am doing, um, so everything I do, not everything, but majority of the things that I do, um, I empower women, right? So that's really my goal, um, to really empower women mentally, physically, financially, emotionally, and spiritually, right? And whatever that may look like for you. Um, but we're having a revitalized, um, retreat, which is on February 23rd to the 25th. Um, we are going to have guest speakers, myself, I'm going to do, um, gratitude and affirmations um different activities we have someone um that is going to do talking about like your womb care doing yoni steams demonstrating the the importance of a yoni steam what is a yoni steam and you know how can you um do it and what's the benefits of it right um then we have someone that's um her name is nicole's story behind the brand she's going to talk about you know like just the story about how my like how my brand has got started um where i was at and um in place in my life when I started Empowerment Fitness and Wellness Center. And then we also have um, Jay. She's going to talk about um, networking and the importance of that. We also have um, my girlfriend. She's the owner of the Naughty Black Box. It talks about, you know, just um, boosting women's um, self-esteem when it comes to that femininity. Because I think sometimes we just lose that. Just all these different hats that we wear, we lose our femininity. So um, we're going to have like just amazing activities for this event. Um, but yes, and revitalize means to bring something new. So we're going to let go of all the old stuff, all these baggage or just things that you just want to release and just call forward to new things. And this is why we're going to, you know, we're going to, revi- we're going to revitalize, you know, God willing, um, uh, for these two, th- two days. So. All right. So as a person with two daughters, I love to hear that we have women again. And this is another thing. Like I said, I see the post and it instantly triggers something to me because I got two daughters. And hearing that we have women who are looking to empower the women and not make them just think that, you know, let's scream, holler, cuss and make noise is the way to go. Uh, Femininity is something that you tackle right there that we're definitely going to put a pen in and come back to that one because it's nothing wrong. People act like uh, gender roles is a problem and there's absolutely nothing wrong with us having. We all have a role in our situation, whether whether it is your marriage, your parent child relationship everybody has a role the problem that we have is people don't like their role and because dad had left and then he kind of forced mom to step into this role but a whole different topic um yes because <laughs> i want to stay on t- i want to stay on task and what it is that we need to know from you what made you start the health and wellness situation how long have you been doing so I've been doing this for, I'm going to say, for, well, I've been doing this for the last seven years. Yes. And um, so I started Empowerment Fitness and Wellness Center because I um, was like, probably like 
two years recently divorced. Um, I was married for 10 years. I got married when I was 18. So I got, I'm 37. I got married when I was 18. Um, I, um, you know, so I was married for 10 years. I got a divorce. A baby. Mm. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then I didn't know how to, like, I was angry. Like, I, you know what I mean? I was, I was angry. I was bitter. I didn't understand. Um, and I come from a two parent, you know, like back, like background, like background, my mom, and my father, you know, and Me that's too. just, a lot. you know what I mean? Like, like my grandma, like my grandfather, that's all I know. So anyway, so I was just really angry and I couldn't understand, you know, like what happened, you know what I mean? A lot of things happened, but I didn't understand and I couldn't like move forward, but I had like, I understood like, okay, you're not the only one, you know what I'm saying? Like other women been through this and you have to get through it. You know, you have to get through it. You're, you have a daughter that you have to raise, you know, I, I wasn't like, you know, by myself, you know what I mean? He's, you know, present, but it's just still, you know, I just wasn't in their marriage. I wasn't in their, their, their union. So, um, I just started working out and working out really kind of like helped me mentally, you know, just get through, um, the pain, the struggle, the, the insecurities, the, 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 um, self doubt, you know, just all this stuff that I had to like take accountability for. Um, it just got me through. And not only that, I used to read this poem from, um, the color girls for, for the movie for the color girls. And the poem is called somebody almost walked off with all of my stuff. And if y'all don't know this poem, y'all should just, you know, go look it up, read it. It's very powerful. And I would read it every day in the mirror and just cry and just until I was able to get my stuff big. You know what I'm saying? When you read the poem, you understand that it's not necessarily tangible stuff, but I, I, I got, I got... <laughs> yeah. so but yeah, so that's why, and, and not only that, and I realized that other women need this. Um, I have, I, I'm the second oldest of six, it's four girls, two boys. My mom didn't have any aunts, so I kind of grew up in a kind of like a male dominant home, even though it was kind of like four girls, two boys. Um, so for me, I understood like women need this. Women need a, a, a group of women that they can trust, they can feel safe, you know what I mean? And they, and they can, somebody they can talk to. Um, and just say like, it's okay. Like, it's okay not to be okay. It's okay that you need help. Um, and that's, and I just wanted to create, not create, but I wanted to form that space and that environment for women. And I noticed that the more that I worked out, I felt good. So it's like, you know, when you feel good, you look good. You know what I'm saying? And it's not necessarily always just physical. It's mental also. It's emotional also. You know, and not only that, just helping other women financially. Then not only that, just spiritually. You know what I'm saying? And I just empower all women. Not Muslim women, but even all women. So, you know, and, and we're relatable. You know what I'm saying? We're relatable. So um, that was that was actually like the, the driving point of this. And it just has blossomed. And I just... You know, it's my passion. Like, it's just really my passion to really like, sis is okay. Like, I've been there. You know what I'm saying? And God has always put it on me because there's been times where I'm like, okay, the roof is caving in, not literally, but mentally. And I'm like, and people still calling me like, bro, I need you. You know what I'm saying? And not necessarily need me. You know what I'm saying? But like, financially, but just need me. So it's like, all right, I got it. So. All right. So <laughs> one, I can, I can get all of that off your answer. I can see your face light up when I brought it up and then you start talking about it. Uh, the thing about the whole situation with the gym, this is why I always like to do the gym by yourself is because you get to zone out. You get to just go headphones in and put yeah. my head down and it's just me. Yeah. There's all the other people in here, but unless this nigga's coming through my set, he don't matter. Like, you know what yeah. I'm yeah. Unless you wiping off something that don't matter. Cause it's just me tunnel vision on myself. Yeah. And the way that the world works when you're an adult with responsibilities, like you said, you got a daughter. My life can't be all about just tunnel vision as to what I have going on because I got I got to be son, wife, daughter, cousin, brother, sister. Like you got so many other things, and then the gym is just you. So you get that time to focus in on just yourself, even if it's only the hour for the day. I at least got that time for myself. Yes. And the best thing that you said was right there was I realized that I was basically I was broken. Yes. And I needed to get myself healed in this situation. Most yeah. people don't self-evaluate and make the proper assessment. Most people yeah. get in a break and say it was all the other person and wasn't me because I'm great, perfect, and I always do the right thing. And even if I do something wrong, I was justified because I was mad, mm -hmm. which is stupid, which yeah. is a sign of immaturity, which is not a sign of I'm an adult, a grown person who also has these little people who are looking at me become the adult. And how am I going to react? How am I going to act? How am I going to? Play my role in this whole situation. 
So right. salute to you for carrying it that way. That was a very mature <laughs> carry it by you. Uh, even like you see, you, I'm 28. 28 ain't. We think when you're 28, I'm as grown as grown get, and it's like you still got some things to get through. Like, yeah. Yeah. Your joints ain't even start hurting yet because you ain't cracked thirty something. Like, right, you right. Woke up and your wrist is just on tilt for no reason. And you don't understand why. <laughs> so, damn, that was like I said, that was commendable on your end for recognizing it. Yeah. What I need to know now, all in this same aspect, because this was going to be one of the rapid fires, but this is a longer answer than a rapid fire. Okay. Uh, eighteen-year-old marriage. Yes. What did you learn? About yourself <laughs> being, I am a eighteen year old because when people take marriage very lightly, especially like our religion is like you need to get married. You shouldn't just be out here knocking stuff down, right. even though you, we do things and we ain't supposed to do. We all do. Right. And I wasn't mature enough to be getting married at no eighteen because I knew once you get married, like I'm whole solely responsible for this woman. If we have yeah. kids, now I got other people. If you're a woman, I'm responsible for this man. I got to make sure that this dude is eating. Yeah. I got to make sure that we got, like, there's a lot that goes with that at 18, at 22, at 23. like Even at 37. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it Copy. That's what I'm saying. At, when I got married, I think I was 29. Okay. And even then it was like, it's a whole bunch of stuff that you can't expect. Even though, like you said, a two-parent household, I had the same thing. My wife had the same thing. But it's like, like oh, so now we, like, we in the front room now. <laughs> like, it's a difference between the back room and the front room. It when is. You, when you got that perspective. So talk to me about what did it take the 18, 19, 20, like those early <laughs> years. About, that's because that's still a situation that women will need to be empowered with because exactly. you got girls who out here getting married in them situations that you just ain't going to be ready for it. So explain <laughs> to me what it was that, how did all of that work out for you? So um, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. Um, and I didn't, I didn't, it didn't, and it wasn't until, um, I got divorced that I learned a lot, you know what I'm saying? Really about myself, but within that marriage, it was more so like, it's, it's a, it's a duty and an obligation. And I seen what my mom did, you know what I mean? Like I said, I, I, the, the women in my family have always catered to them. And so taking care of a man, cooking, cleaning, like all of those characteristics came as like second nature. Having an understanding of and something that I talk about with people is love language, understanding love languages, right? That's something that I didn't learn until after. And I had to realize like we were like a lot of our issues where we were speaking, uh, um, we were speaking different languages. So a lot of our clashes, a lot of misunderstandings or miscommunications came from not understanding and receiving each other's love language. Right. So that was one thing though, too, that, when you that young, we also have to develop what is our love language. We, right. So, so, and that was and enough. We gotta, yeah, we gotta recognize that it's like I don't even really know how. I kind of know how I want you to treat me, but I don't know how I want you to love me. Exactly. And there's a huge difference there. Go ahead. It's I bet. Difference. So, so it was more. It was just like we were married. This is my duty, and and that was it. And we were just we were like winging it. We were growing as young adults. And learning at the same time. Um, I had my daughter at 22. So then, you know, that Damn, was. My wife was 22 when my oldest daughter was born. Yeah, 22. So then when that hit, when that came, it was like, ah, you know, I didn't know. That was another thing. So I didn't know how to like, kind of like balance. Like all my attention went to my daughter. You know what I'm saying? And I realized that he got jealous. And that's a natural thing. You know what I mean? When you're used to getting paid, it's like, it, it, you know what I'm saying? And it wasn't like he was jealous of his daughter. But it's like he like yo like what? I'm like he was no. sleeping on the floor. I'm like okay. bro, you gotta so, go. You gotta go. <laughs> so all right, see, I've been doing this for a while. I told you, I did an episode on the male reaction after the first child because I, me and my daughter, my daughter just turned eleven a couple of days ago, and we were talking about this, and I'm like, kids are a grenade. They blow up everything that you ever thought, knew, and saw. <laughs> Your world has become completely different now. And now you have to find out, do I really love this person? Because now I love this little person more than I love myself. Mm -hmm. I've always been, if something blows up, I'm making sure I get down the street. Now you're making sure you push them out the door before you do anything else. 
Exactly. And there is a lot that goes into us recognizing that in the moment because nobody recognizes that in the moment. Right. I told I, it's certainly me and my daughter just had this conversation. The first year of a baby, we both so tired, we don't even know what's going on. We arguing and don't know we arguing. You still mad about Wednesday and it's Saturday. Like like you said, he's sleeping on the floor. I didn't even notice the first two days. Yeah. This is gonna be two hours you getting up with the bottles and then you didn't poop yeah. again. We ran out of diapers. All of that, like that goes into those initially having a baby. We both become jealous because all of our attention both goes to the baby. Exactly. And when we finally get the baby sleep, it's like, all right, I'm gonna go take a shower and I'm gonna take real long in there because you here now. <laughs> and I'm gonna need this 20 minutes to myself. Yes. I need to just go stare at Instagram for a couple of minutes. I need to go to the gym or like you said, all of those different things that nobody really prepares you for because there's no right. real way to prepare you for that until you sit in there and you go, Oh my God, she crying again. But go ahead, my bad. I didn't mean to jump into <laughs> but, you. Well, that, well, and we had a so and, and and you need a village too. Like I learned, like you need a village, and we we had a village, but we didn't have a village to help us with marriage, if that makes sense. We had a village with our daughter, but we didn't have a, a village with with marriage. And and like I said, it just I learned a lot. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, it's a, it, when you said broken, it's so funny. I just had a conversation where it's like I have a relationship with words, and like I said, Bobby, growing up with, uh, around like mostly men in my family, I couldn't say that. I couldn't say like at one point like I was broken because I was like, mm, nah, not me. Like, like mm, not broken. Like, nah, I might be hurt. My feelings are hurt, but broken, that's something else. So I was I was definitely was broken. Um, I am a, a domestic violence. Um, I guess I don't want to say survivor, but you know what I'm saying? Um, there was domestic violence in our release in our marriage. Um, so that that was another thing too. You know what I'm saying? So that played a lot. You know what I'm saying on our on our marriage um, and on our divorce, so it just it just was it was a lot. It wasn't until like I said I was by myself that I could really just like you know soak everything in and say okay listen this is what you could have done better. This is what who you were at this point. You're not this person now, and it's not your fault. And not only that, like understanding like. Um, how my mom, like my, my, my relationship with my mother, how, when, how was she, when she grew up or her relationship, you know what I'm saying? Like with my father, like a lot of things, I just had a lot of questions and just went back to my childhood to understand like different traumas that I had that kind of like spilled over. But, and that wasn't even till I hit my thirties, I had those conversations, but you know what I'm saying? After like in the, my late twenties, I was like, you know, I, like I said, I learned a lot about myself and I realized that, you know, it's, 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 it's serious. You know what I mean? It's, it's serious and we took it serious, but by us not having, I'm going to say, um, an ideal role model because it's because I had two parents. It doesn't necessarily mean that like my, like, I never heard my parents argue, but I knew they argue his parents. You know what I'm saying? They might have fought all the time. You get what I'm saying? So like that's my how mom he, and my, my and mom me, and like, my dad was together. Yeah, well, like, thirty-five, like, I don't forty this. years. And I've never seen them have one argument. <laughs> none. But I know that they had. You know, what I mean? you could tell. Oh, mommy ain't speaking to daddy. Daddy ain't speaking to my. Or they, they must be beefing. But with him, not like like scenes, j uh, drama. That was all his. You know what I mean? His his family or upbringing. So it was kind of like learning all of that and had to and, and we had to go back to that like you know we, we always talk you know what i'm saying about like hey listen like you know we was just winging it you know what i'm saying we was muslim we trying to fear a law you know what i'm saying like that's all we trying to do and we're just like it's like we're building a plane as we go with no instructions if that makes sense you know what i mean so the reason why i asked you about all of that was because uh it goes back to the, like you said the empowerment situation realizing that Everything is not always about me and is how can I help somebody else through this situation based on right. my experiences. Now, some people ain't going to listen to your experiences because then, you know, your kids and think that you came out and you was 34 already. Like you never had to do homework. You never was right. mad at your mom. None of that never happened because, you know, you was born in your 30s. But <laughs> the thing that you're doing here is realizing that all of the things that happened in my life and I want to be able to help somebody else with that. Which is a thing that, again, I want to commend you. I want to salute you. And I want to say thank you <laughs> for doing that for 
somebody else. This might be somebody that's 18 or it might be somebody that's 45 or 54 who needs to hear or needs to experience that, needs to know that, oh, damn, it ain't just me. Because, you know, everybody, we all the stars of our own show. Yeah. We all think that this is only happening to me and it's not happening to yeah. nobody else because yeah. I'm so special. Right. <laughs> I thank you for doing this. Thank you for putting that out there. With the retreat, is there an age limit or anything on that? Or you know what? I never even that? thought about that. The only thing, because when we have the, um, I would say like eighteen and above, because when we have our self, <laughs> our self esteem, it is going to get into when we with the femininity. It is going to get into sexuality, if that makes sense. It's not explicit, but I would. I mean, but I, you know what? I haven't thought about that because my daughter is 15 and we talk about femininity. We talk about say we actually been talking about marriage lately. You know what I'm saying? Like that's been on her mind and we've been having these conversations. So I really haven't thought about that. I really haven't thought about that, to be honest. Maybe that's something I need to like go back and, you know, um, revisit because um, my girlfriend has just the owner of the Naughty Black Box. Is she's going to tap into femininity, you know what I'm saying? And just all different things that you can tap into with yourself where it pertains, if it becomes, um, if it's like, you know, clothing, um, different, you know, just femininity stuff. I don't want to, you know, yeah, I mean, you wing, yeah, we don't have to be too, I got yeah. copy. I got you. <laughs> but, we all grown yeah. here. <laughs> 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 all right. Cause that's why I, I had a little black box. So you kind of know where that goes when we Yoni steaming and all of that. That's why I said, but, but Yoni yeah. Steven, I think for any, I think that can be any age is like if she has a um a menstrual cycle. My daughter Yoni Steams, you know what I'm saying? Like mm. it's that's what I'm saying. It's the benefit of Yoni Steaming is it goes way, you know, like it's it's so many benefits for it. and especially our young women now who have like you know suffer from endometriosis, fibroids, even our women now like they're having so many like um ovarian or like just uterine uterine issues where it's just like. That's another topic too. You know what I mean? But Yoni Steam hey. is very it's better, it's very beneficial. So that's I'm something. Glad my kids are eleven and three. I don't have these <laughs> menstrual situations just yet. Right. right. Um, <laughs> one more thing that I want to jump into still on the on the what do we need to know situation is I I pay attention and listen to what my guest is telling me. Right. Now you said that you had a uh the poem that you was reading every day. What was the name of the poem again? Somebody almost walked off with all of my stuff. What is what of your stuff that you have to get back? That oh. you notice that you <laughs> noticed was in the bag as you know what I'm saying? as you was going out the door and you noticed, hold up, man, those is my plates and I had those glasses. What did you notice of your stuff was being walked out with? Oh yes. Um my um That was woo, a good one, my, wasn't it? My self esteem. <laughs> um seriously, okay. my self Esteem. I'm very I'm I've always been very confident within anything I've done, but my self-esteem was um in that like took up majority of that bag. Um my self-esteem, my um my confidence, my um like feelings of inadequacy was um I had to get back, I had to get back just being, you know, looking in the mirror, looking at myself because you know, like I got punched in the face. Like I've never had like you know what I mean? That did something to me. That, that, that like broke me too. Like being punched in the face and my face swollen up. Like, so just looking in the mirror, um, I had to get back. Um, what else? Um, I just, I just had to get a lot of stuff back. My, my dignity, my pride and not pride in the sense of, cause I'm not pride means that you look down on people, but being pride to be, um, a Muslim woman, you know what I mean? Being pride, prideful to be just a woman in general, a mother, um, a Muslim woman. What else? Um, like I said, if you said the biggest one that I heard was the look in the mirror, because all of that stuff goes into it. If you have to look at yourself in the mirror and you like, like you said, I don't, I hate even hearing about. Like I said, I got daughters, I got a niece, I got, I'm all women. <laughs> like, is having to look at myself and see that like the choices I made in my life have led me here to whatever that is. Yeah. And it's like, how do I even deal with myself doing through that? Exactly. All of that is you fighting yourself. Exactly. So I understand that that is a huge drink. Yeah. That a lot of people, again, we don't make good assessments of ourselves when we look in the mirror. 
when we look inward to ourselves, you could be a five to 400 pounds and you think that you like, I'm in the perfect shape and I'm the best thing ever. And it's like, that's not what's really going on here. You need yeah. to do some push-ups. You need to get into the gym. You need to eat a couple <laughs> of salads. Like right. you got to mix in, you know what I'm saying? Some push-aways as my uncle used to call them. Push away from the table. <laughs> like, because you're not making a good assessment of yourself. And if you say no. like, basically I'm watching myself go to a point where it's like, how did I even get here? Yeah. And that's why <laughs> I said in the beginning, which was the, broken situation is because if you look at if you find it difficult to look at yourself in the mirror it's because you are broken whether you whoever's listening to this realizes it or not right. that's yeah. step one right there yeah definitely I, I definitely agree i definitely was um it was broken and, and like i said just understanding like rock or like how I, I was brought up like i just it just was it was a lot it was a lot like i said and i'm and i'm grateful you know what i'm saying i wouldn't that's the only thing I, I'm like, Ugh. but, um, and it's crazy because my daughter doesn't know, you know what I'm saying? Like she, you know what I mean? She doesn't know. So, um, and I don't think I would ever even like share that with her, you know what I'm saying? Because she has her own image of her father, you know what I'm saying? So it was yeah, kind of, wanna, you don't want to break that glass for her. No, now. They had this relationship. Yeah. Like, she's, she's daddy's girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, so and I would never take that from, her, you know what I mean? From him or her. Okay, I, Again, so, this is a very mature situation out of you because you know most people weaponize their kids and say okay. he ain't do this and he don't do that and no, go through a whole bunch of goofy stuff that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Yeah. All right. Now we wanna uh we wanna lighten it up now. We've been very heavy here. Okay. So now this is uh the get to know you segment. The get to know you segment is sponsored by Custom Hustle. That's my clothing line where we do custom jackets, custom jerseys, football, basketball, baseball, hockey. Soccer, however you need them. We got four versions of the sneaks. The CH1s, 2s, 3s, and 4s are available in any color. Uh, we also got the collar shirts. We got the sweatsuits. We got the flip-flops. However you need it. We got the cargo pants, too. However you need it, customized over at Custom Hustle World on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. We're making it happen. Now, this is what we need to know from you, because we talked a little bit off mic before we started the show. Uh... What is it that made you so passionate about the healthcare aspect of life? Well, my grandma was a nurse. <laughs> my mom was a nurse. <laughs> so um, so I was like lineage of nurses. Is what of nurses, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I just like I said, the women and we always we just always took care of like the men in our family. So just oh, like just nurturing was just something that it's just was something that was just I guess like part part of us and um. And I like making a difference. I like making a difference um, with people. And, you know, I've always been in tune with, you know, I like health. I like the body. You know, I like how the body works, the anatomy. So, you know. Uh, something that you said right there uh, that I want to jump right back into uh, the weekend's festivities. Will we be talking about nurturing? Because women these days are acting like nurturing is a bad word. Like you told them that you was going <laughs> <laughs> tie him to the bed and you were never leaving out of here is nurturing something that we will be talking about of course of course so this is the thing nurturing nurturing ties back into femininity i think and, yes. and to go back to what you said well i think when we were talking like offline about roles and you said that people don't want to play their role and i believe that once we get back to like and i was i was one of those i was i was a, i was a woman that was like my father was a male chauvinistic. So I to me, like I was like, mm, you can make your own food, sandwich. You know what I mean? It was kind of like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm the rebel. I was the rebel of the family. But at the same time, like I understood and I understand that I as a woman, I have a role. You know what I'm saying? Even in this land, like Allah has given us a role. You know what I'm saying? He designed us a certain way. And once we tap into that and once we understand that and once we value the role that we play, it, it will make it easier. Like, you know what I'm saying? Stop like, fighting against it. That'd be the problem. Exactly. Acceptance but, but, is always acceptance this, is always our problem. <laughs> so that too. But this is the thing because I was taken out of my femininity because inside my marriage, it wasn't we didn't have, it was role reversal, if that makes sense. And a lot of times we're in the times now where there's role reversal, where the woman is the man and the man is the woman. And, and that is causing yes. the problem. 
And it takes us out of, seriously, it takes us out of the divine femininity. So when, yes, when you talk about nurturing, when you talk about femininity, it's like, I don't got time for that. Like I'm, I'm working eight, I'm working as much as you working, or I might be working more. You know what I'm saying? So you talking about house you do these, bro. I think you need to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of, a lot of that, the, divine femininity we lose because we're taken out of that role so yes we we have to and, and we have to get back to that because we weren't made like that we were made to be a comfort we were made to conform to the man we were made to be soft you know what i mean like everything about the everything about a woman a man is attracted to everything everything so we are we're we're supposed to be their comfort and not to say that men are not supposed to be ours but we're supposed to like everything about a woman a man is attracted to you get what i'm saying for us yeah, as women, I, absolutely like, i'm trying not to cut you off but uh, yeah, okay, listen, okay. yeah no i'm i'm wholeheartedly in agreement with you uh and we have to way, learn and these then new as wage a, niggas is feminine and yes like these, they these emotional as hell masculine. and these and these women is no limit soldiers. So, like, <laughs> and it's a time for that. Issue. Don't get me wrong. It's a time and a place for that. You get what I'm saying? It's a time for a place where I might have to, you know what I mean, lace my boots up and go out there. You know what I'm saying? But that's only on a need. To, that's only if my that's only if my king is, is is hurt a little bit. If my king is hurt, all right, cool. Let me lace these boots up real quick. Let me and nurture him so he Happy. can get out there. You get what I mean? It's perfect. See, this be the problem with people. They be too like uh they be too literal where you're not saying there's not never a time where you need her to be that. It's not ever a time where the man can't be emotional. He can't be vulnerable. Right. But if we go to the extremes of it's a hundred percent of always one thing, that's how we get these problems. Cause then yeah. again, the acceptance of your role will always have you just saying like, well, I ain't doing that cause I'm different and I'm special and it's me. Right. And that's how we get these situations. But I wanted to make sure you're saying that we were throwing that in there with the ladies while we was around the of campfire. Course. Of, <laughs> course. <laughs> of course. Of course. Of course. I'm all for it because I had to learn and I had to understand. You know what I'm saying? And then when I when I when I learned and understood, I was like, oh. And that and that too was a part of something that I lacked in my marriage. It was like fem like feminine. I was like, I was a whole nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like even outside of like being even being divorced for a long time, like my male brothers that I consider like the, the males that are in my life that are like are that have like a major impact, they like Brit, like you like, like you gotta calm down, yeah. Calm down. You gotta calm it down. You gotta do take off it. the fatigues, man. Take off the fatigue. And I was ladies. like, I was like, no, they're <laughs> mine. Like <laughs> Nobody wants to see you show up in a pair of butters and some fatigues. That's not what At we all. want. We don't. We don't need you in no steel toes. Okay. Or no di Keep the and no dickies. Yeah. No steel toes and dickies. We don't need none. Right. Of that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now yeah. let's get back into the health and wellness situation. When you're in the gym, what is your favorite workout? So um, I do abs every day. Um, I'm. I. So the thing about it is that um, I'm a runner. I'm a long distance runner. I love like. Running is my thing. Running has actually been, and that's how I started. I just started running like two miles a day. But you know, as you get into health and your, you know, your body goals change. I had to slow down on running because I started getting runner's body. That's what they call it, right? <laughs> when you just like real like slim. <laughs> so I started getting runner's body. But I'm I love running. Running is something that I can like, you know, zone out in. So um, running abs every day. Um, I do glutes. I work on every. I like I work on everything. Like it's it's. I'm, I'm not really. Um, one of them but it's just i'm more so like what's the challenge like what like what are, what are we doing so right now my challenge right now because i don't like i don't like push-ups like push-ups is something that i cannot stand you know what i'm saying push-ups and pull-ups so i've been working like literally hard to be able to do like a proper like military push-up so between that and um pull-ups but yeah, everything else like i said it's more mental i don't run as much as i used to um like i said because you know like i'm i'm but abs every day and um, just working on the things that I consider um, a challenge for me, because I'm not going to say a weakness, but I consider a challenge. Lastly, on these, what would you say would be the best thing to eat after you've had that great workout or that good run? I know the runners, like you said, yeah, you be out there, you get you get lean quick. Yeah, yeah. Hitting them, hitting that pavement, that shit is hard. <laughs> Shin splints and all of that type of time. <laughs> well, you might you gotta get the right shoes, but we'll talk about that. But um, no, but um. 
you know, just some like, people go cheap when you go cheap on your situation, you go get cheap results. You gotta get yeah, you, you gotta you know you <laughs> for, yeah. I don't play around with running sneakers. Now that I don't do. But um I would say something like high in protein, um, high in protein or whey protein, like especially for its whey protein helps to rebuild muscle. It has a lot of amino acids, which is like good fats to like restore those muscles. Um, um, I have a protein shake that I usually drink um, right after my workouts. Um, it's considered a meal replacement. So it has like 21 minerals and vitamins in it. Only has nine grams of sugar. So that's another thing too. Like people have to be mindful. Like we have all these different shakes and stuff like that out there, but pay attention to your, your sugar intake and your sodium intake because that does matter. Um, just because it says a protein shake, those things matter. Um, but yeah, so I'm always, I'm and, and for me, like I'm always eating fruit, but as long as you have like a high protein um, meal after your workout, I think that's the best thing or something with whey in it. Cause like I said, whey has those amino acids, which is those good fats that kind of like, you know what I mean? Help your muscles regroup and recover and grow. Copy that. Now, before we close out episode 131, Britt, I appreciate you coming on. I let us know. Yes. Let us know one more time before we close out, where can people purchase the tickets? Where can people uh, come to support the situation? When is it? I know the location will not be given out until your tickets are purchased, right. but give us all of that good stuff before we go. Yes, yes, yes. So it's going to be in the Poconos area. Um, but yes, y'all, y'all can, um, it's a, actually um, on Nurse Brick um, underscore 24 fit. I have the um, actual um, link in my bio. So you could click the link in my bio and it's going to take you to the event right event events bright page where you'll see all the information and you can purchase your ticket y'all the tickets are 350 um and you're getting a cake like you're getting so much for this 350 you're gonna get a catered um meals and stuff like that so i just i just want y'all to show up you know what i'm saying like i want y'all to come just experience being around some positive powerful and influential women right i know y'all probably never heard of me but y'all gonna hear y'all gonna y'all y'all gonna hear about me all this year and continue on but i just need y'all to come and just show up because like i said it's gonna be powerful and it's something that we need as women um but shit, just click the link in my bio follow me on instagram nurse brick underscore 24 fit it's the link in my bio um if you want to sponsor you can sponsor someone um just hit me up just just dm me just dm me and like i said the, you can find the link in my bio copy that Britt, I appreciate you coming on. That was episode 131, and we are out. I am hype. That's H Y M P E. It's hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up. Feel it, feel it.